a Rangers reliever is out for the season. Texas also signed all of their players in arbitration, avoiding arbitration hearings yet again, and they signed a whole bunch of international free agents. We'll talk about all that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked onto the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan since 2010, the founder and host for all four seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Thank y'all so much for listening and subscribing and making it your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers and subscribe on YouTube where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment any single thing below. Now, before we get into all of this newsy business that's happened since I recorded my last episode, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. So let's start with the most important bit of news. Brett Martin, the Rangers left handed reliever, is going to be out for most, if not all, of the season after undergoing shoulder surgery. I don't think it's actually happened just quite yet. This is uh this is just really a, a real bummer news for the Rangers. Not completely, you know, life altering season shattering or anything like that. Um, But Brett Martin was a pretty important part of the Rangers bullpen last year. He pitched in 55 games through 50 innings. It was one of the worst years of his career, but still was a solid average lefty big league reliever. Had a 414 ERA, which I think got blown up just a little bit more um, with a couple of bad months. And because he was really, really overworked um, because the Rangers didn't have a whole lot else in the back end of the bullpen until they got some of that midseason reinforcements with Jonathan Hernandez and Jose Leclerc coming to the rescue to kind of help out this bullpen. But for his career, he's gotten to 385 ERA in just under 200 innings, um, an ERA plus of 119 for his career. So he's been really, really solid. A, a big, tall lefty who does very, very well against opposing lefties, doesn't get a crap ton of strikeouts, but is is really, really tough for lefties to hit, can get you multiple innings if you need it, but usually just a one-inning guy. Keeps the ball on the ground, keeps the ball in the ballpark, and has been fairly valuable having those guys. <clears throat> they don't pop up everywhere. So when you lose someone who has been a key part of this bullpen for the well, last I'd say three out of the last four years, he only pitched under 15 innings in 2020. But still, he has been a a solid part of the Rangers' pen the last couple of years when it has been fairly bare. So this is this is kind of a bummer for the Rangers to to get this news in the middle of January. Um, maybe if if we had found this out towards the end of the season, I mean, I, I always kind of end up thinking this, but we obviously know a whole lot less than the doctors do. It's like, oh well, if he's going to get surgery now, then like he might as well have gotten it at the end of the season, but maybe it didn't pop up until he was thrown a bullpen recently. I don't know. We don't have a whole lot of information to go on here. Um, th- the good news for him is that he, he did get a little bit of a raise in, in arbitration, according to Evan Grant of the Dallas Morning News. He is making $1.275 million, which is about a quarter million dollar raise from what he made last year. So uh, that's that's nice for him. Glad he's getting a little bit of a raise, even though he's probably not going to pitch a whole lot this season. The Rangers had five other players go to arbitration. Um, they did not make it to arbitration hearings because the Rangers have not done that since Lee Stevens in the year 2000. So it's been 22, 23 years, actually. So <laughs> the Rangers, I'm pretty darn sure, have the longest streak of not going to an arbitration hearing. There aren't a whole lot of players that are doing that. I believe Max Freed, the left-handed pitcher for the Braves, is one of the few that is doing that. He did that last year, and he went from, I think, around five-ish million, which is what the Braves were wanting him to get, to like <clears throat> six or seven. And then he finished second in Cy Young voting last year. So, and they're, they're still kind of on the lower end with him. He's a guy who I would keep an eye out on for the Braves who have long-term deals with pretty much everyone on their roster. 
And the fact that they've gone to arbitration hearings back to back with him and even doing it after a season where he finished second in Cy Young voting, that's a, a free agent down the line. I'm definitely going to look at the Rangers maybe being in on because even though the Braves have their entire core locked up, they don't have Max Fried locked up, which makes me think that he is eventually going to be a free agent and someone in three, two, three years time that the Rangers could definitely keep an eye on. But anyway, the other players to go through and get their deals done, the highest paid player is going to be Nathaniel Lowe, who is receiving four million and fifty thousand dollars. Garver took the longest. We thought he might end up being the one to break the streak, but he is making three point nine million. Taylor Hearn, one point four six million, and Jonathan Hernandez, um, just five thousand shy of a million dollars this year. So pretty big upgrade for Nathaniel Lowe. This is his first year in arbitration. There is a reason that he is the Rangers highest paid player in of this arbitration group. I mean, I thought Mitch Garver might end up beating him out, but Garver's health, I think, really, really cost him. This is Garver's last year of arbitration, his last year under contract. He is going to be free agent after this. And, uh, yeah, none of these guys are super-duper expensive, mainly because they're all relievers except for these two position players. But, uh, yeah, Lowe got a pretty big raise going from, I believe it was 770000 last year because he was, uh, excuse me, 716000 last year um, because he was pre-arbitration. Then he goes out and has a career year and absolutely kills it. And now he's still only going to be making $4 million. He's probably going to be the second uh, or maybe even best hitter in this Rangers lineup, I mean, depending on uh, what trades may or may not happen or what other free agent. I don't, I don't think any other free agent on the market is going to be better or better than any of the Rangers' top three or four hitters, honestly. But there are some decent options out there. The Rangers actually did end up making a move and signing another minor league deal with somebody who has some major league experience, and I'm kind of confused about it, and it kind of made me look at the bottom of the barrel for the rest of the remaining free agents that the Rangers, who I have not looked at, or the Rangers could look at to fill that left field hole. We're going to get into that. Some of the international signings there's not a whole lot of information there but there is one who has a pretty famous relative we're gonna get into all that and more but first this episode is brought to you by bet online betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to basketball to hockey we have got it all at betonline.net i'm sure <clears throat> sometime soon they're uh BetOnline.net's uh, lines for Major League Baseball are going to start start coming out, and I'm really curious to see where they think the Rangers are going to finish. Uh, I'm assuming that it'll be somewhere in the 500-ish range, which is what a lot of projections I have seen are saying. But uh, if you're wanting to bet on those Cowboys, this is uh, maybe the last time you'll get to do that this season. If you're listening to this before the Monday night game, so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more because BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Now, the Rangers made a signing, a a guy who's got experience in the outfield. So they have their left fielder, right? Uh, no. <clears throat> no, absolutely not. The Rangers have signed Yoshi Sutsugo, the uh, left-handed hitting former Pirate, former Dodger, former Ray, to a minor league deal with an invite, I believe, to major league camp. He has spent... Three seasons in the big leagues. He spent 2020 with the Rays. He split time in 2021 between the Rays and the Dodgers. Um, yes. And uh, in uh, 20, and also the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2021. Three different teams. Uh, he had a lot of success with the Pittsburgh Pirates in a limited sample size. But uh, last year, he was also with the Pirates and was honestly pretty terrible there's a reason this is not a major league deal he played 50 games last year had a 478 ops again that is a first baseman slash dh slash uh, allegedly outfielder who had an ops below 500 and uh still still got a lot of plate appearances had a negative 1.7 baseball reference war last year with the pirates which is just um <clears throat> it's not it's not good 
It's not good. It's not great. Um, he has shown some promise. I mean, in his stint, he split time between three different teams in 2021 uh, because he wasn't doing well with either of the first ones. His first major league season, he played 51 games with the Rays, had an OPS of 708. It was like, he's, he's fine. He was fine occasionally in there for the Rays. Then was pretty terrible for 26 games with Tampa Bay, was pretty terrible for 12 games with the Dodgers, and then went to Pittsburgh, played 43 games there, and had an 883 OPS, eight home runs there, and 144 plate appearances, hit 268 on base of 347. So you think, oh, oh, maybe he kind of figures something out. And then this year, um, well, he was just back to being uh, not very good. He was much, much better in Japan, which is where he is from. Had an 883 career OPS um, in all of his seasons in uh, different professional baseball. Excuse me. The, all of his foreign seasons, so that includes a little bit of the minor leagues. I, played, I, think, I believe he played 300 games there at the lower level of Japanese baseball, but at the highest level, 10 seasons, 968 games, exactly 4,000 plate appearances on the dot. He had a career OPS of 910, 205 home runs, 195 doubles, 11 triples, and on base of 382. One That is the one thing that he has always done very lo- well at the major league level is walk at a pretty darn good rate. But again, I don't, I don't really get this. I, I think it's fine. Maybe the Rangers professional scouts saw something and, um, I mean, obviously, he, he did it for a, a decently prolonged stretch at the big league level um, in 43 games with Pittsburgh in 2021. So, I mean, that's that's kind of confusing that he, he was able to hit there, but not with Tampa Bay and not with the Dodgers, the Dodgers who fix pretty much everybody, it feels like. Maybe, maybe they just, both those teams just fix pitchers and they don't fix hitters. But, I mean, he's shown a little bit at the big league level. He's not going to get a a big league roster spot immediately off the get-go. It kind of reminds me of, of Joe McCarthy. Like it, it feels like a pretty similar signing. Joe McCarthy was a guy who spent time with the Rangers in spring training last year, plays the corner outfield and first base, a left-handed hitter, and had a, a pretty decent season in 2021 with Sacramento. The uh, Giants AAA affiliate had a 926 OPS um, last year with uh, Oryx in uh Japanese professional baseball, the the JPWL, um, 13 games there, had a 1,057 OPS on base of 350, slugged over 700 in that small sample size. So the Rangers liked what they saw from him last year. I think some of the beat writers, I think Levi Weaver, um, thought, hey, maybe this guy will end up making the roster out of camp because there weren't a whole lot of options in the outfield, but that ended up not being the case. He went to Japan. Did okay over there, and uh, he's back for another similar deal, pretty much the same deal as Yoshi Sutsugo of, all right, we're going to send you to Big League Camp. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, I just I don't really get it. I mean, the Rangers have left field kind of open, but I don't see either of these guys being really an upgrade over what the Rangers have in left field now. I mean, whether it's Bubba Thompson, whether it's Josh Smith, who I – I keep seeing floated out there as like an everyday left field option. I don't see that. I think most of his value is being able to play the infield. Maybe it's Ezekiel Duran. Maybe it's even a little bit of Brad Miller, who is still on this roster. Um, I don't know how much he'll figure in, but if he has as bad a season as he did last year, then I wouldn't be surprised the Rangers cut him pretty early on into the season because you can't really afford to waste a roster spot on a guy who is, you know, has defensive as defensive versatility, not a whole lot of value when he's playing that versatility, but is is there to crush Ryan at pitching and didn't do that last year. But I'm just kind of confused by this signing. I don't think it's a whole lot better than what the Rangers have, but there are a few other options. If the Rangers are trying to scrape the bottom of the free agent barrel, there are a few guys who I think are pretty interesting who maybe the Rangers could end up turning around just a little bit. The, the top of the list guy for me is uh, Rymel Tapia, who spent last season with the Blue Jays, spent most of his career with the Colorado Rockies, a former top 100 prospect, a guy who I believe made it into maybe even the top 10 of baseball prospectus back in his career at a .3 war last year, a guy who just makes incredible, he kind of reminds me of Nick Williams, if you remember that Rangers prospect, a guy who can just barrel 
anything, doesn't walk a whole lot, but makes really solid contact, a left-handed hitter. Not a great defender, but I think he's got something in there offensively if the Rangers can get a little bit more patience out of him. Um, then he's got the, the barrel to, to ball skills and the, the bat speed that you just cannot teach. And I think if the Rangers are, are looking to do a deal with somebody that was kind of like this of a, hey, he, we'll see if he's got something left in the tank. That's a guy who I thought could make a little bit of sense. Another guy is a Texan from Spring, Texas, went to Texas A&M, former first-round pick. That is Tyler Naquin, has a career war of 3.3 in the big leagues, has been in the big league since 2016, provides some pretty solid defense in left field, had a season just in 2021 with Cincinnati. Now, you have to wonder if that was a little bit park-aided, because since he is such a hitter-friendly park, but he had an 809 OPS in over 450 plate appearances, 19 home runs, 24 doubles, and an on-base of 333. That's a guy who could definitely provide a lot of value. Had a season with Cleveland in 2019, uh, 89 games there, just under 300 plate appearances with 10 homers and a 792 OPS. So, and his rookie season, 116 games there for Cleveland, 14 bombs, 886 OPS, in uh, 365 plate appearances. So I think there's something there. The Rangers are looking for just a guy to see what he has. He hits left-handed. He plays left field very well. I think that's definitely a guy who they could take take a look at. Same with Robbie Grossman. There's some other guys who are more established big leaguers that I I think might be more realistic. But I I think that those two guys specifically, if the Rangers are going to take chances on guys like Yoshi Sutsuko and, and Joe McCarthy, then like... I mean, might as well. Those guys, Naquin and, and Tapia, might end up getting major league deals somewhere because the just the corner outfield market, just the outfield market in general, is is kind of bare at this point. But definitely some people to keep an eye on. Coming up, we're gonna get into the Rangers international signings. Who the best player in their pool is, and a a relative of a famous baseball player, two famous baseballs player actually. But first, this episode is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, then you have got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, so I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. And if you're looking for the same, then you want to eat healthier, but don't sacrifice taste. Built Bar is the perfect thing to try. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That is right, real chocolate that come in unbelievably good flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond. I don't know how Built Bar does it, but they make this protein bar taste like a candy bar. Now you don't have to wait for the boxes to show up order them at built.com and you know sit there and and track them on your email or whatever until they get there you can just head to your nearest walmart and sam club and pick yourself up a box you can get the four bar box of cookies and cream double chocolate or coconut puffs at walmart or head to sam's club grab a 13 bar box of our hit flavors brownie batter and true thank me later go grab yourself some built bars now the rangers have agreed to a deal with so many, they have actually signed, not agreed to a deal. Sorry, the the language is very important now in the wake of the Carlos Correa fiasco, which I don't think I talked about on here. And if you, if I'm the only source of you getting baseball news, Carlos Correa is is now a twin, not a Met. Um, he had deals fall through with both the Mets and the Giants, and then he signed a six year deal worth two hundred million dollars um, because of concerns about an ankle injury from twenty fourteen. I believe it's been a hot minute, but he was back in the minor leagues then, and there were concerns about how well that's going to hold up. But that is why, for now on, everyone's going to be very careful about agreed to a deal versus signed. But the Rangers have signed many free agents, seventeen to be precise, including Sebastian Walcott Walcott of the Bahamas. He is the Rangers' top signee in this class. Um, He is the number eight ranked prospect among these international signees. According to MLB Pipeline, Texas had a pool of $4.144 million because they forfeited a million dollars worth of international bonus pool money last year by signing the restricted free agents Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon, which again, you do in an absolute heartbeat. But shortstop Sebastian Walcott of the Bahamas is the Rangers' most uh, highly rated pick. They also, he gets comparisons to Jazz Chisholm, which like is kind of unfair because Jazz is already one of the more electric and exciting players in baseball. He is an all-star 
And there aren't a whole lot of players that have had a whole, a whole lot of success in the Bahamas in the past. Now there's kind of a new wave of Bahamanian uh, players that are kind of coming through the system. Jazz is pretty much the face of that. And he is unfortunately stuck on a very unfun Marlins team when he is a guy full of flash and pizzazz and a whole lot of freaking talent. Um, but they also signed the son of Vladimir Guerrero. No, they didn't sign Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but they did sign uh, his brother, Pablo Guerrero, who is an outfielder and I believe one of the second or, or third best player in the Rangers class this year. Um, he projects to be a pretty darn good hitter. I don't think he's going to be, the, he's not the same level of talent as his older bro bro brother, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but I am really excited to see what he can do. Anybody with a famous father that is that good at baseball, it probably has some really darn, definitely has some really darn good genes and is probably a little bit more prepared than the average player because, you know, they can talk to their dad about, all right, what was it actually like to go through the minor leagues? What was it like? What were the things that you encountered? And he has a brother who did that not very long ago. And so he has a whole lot of resources to bounce ideas off of. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information on these guys, but uh, I mean, Walcott is is the guy who has a plus hit tool. Should be a, a pretty decent defender um, in at shortstop. Listed at six three, he is 16 years old. Turned 17 on March 14th, which means he was born. In 2006, which, uh, again, all these guys will make you feel super, super old, listed at 170 pounds. According to MLB Pipeline, they grade his future plus tools. One of them is his hit. They grade that at a 60, his arm at a 60, his fielding at a 55. So they think he should be pretty decent. A guy who, who provides a lot of offensive value at the shortstop position should be able to stick there once he fills out a little bit more still a little bit big for the shortstop position at 6-3 but I think that he can handle it um, just based on the few things that I have read about him but honestly nobody knows a whole lot about these kids uh, I'm excited for the Rangers to get both of these guys and get another son of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. which the Rangers nepotism like relations to stars current uh stars is is kind of interesting they have luis and hell acuna um who is the brother of ronald acuna jr they also have ties to some other big stars i mean patrick mahomes senior was a texas ranger and patrick mahomes jr well he was not drafted by the rangers but he's off playing football um and fernando tatis senior was a texas ranger and fernando tatis jr is obviously a star with the with the san diego padres so uh yeah just the the Rangers, Nepo, get one more Nepo baby. I think he'll be pretty darn good. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see where they start these guys, how much they end up playing this year. They'll probably both start in the Dominican Summer League. I'm curious to see how quickly they get stateside because that kind of shows you how the Rangers feel about these prospects is how quickly they move through the system. Some other names on this list, I will just go ahead and read you off who they signed. And there's not a whole lot of information of most of these other guys. They signed uh, Geisel Cepeda from Cuba. They signed several, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the Dominican Republic, including Snarlin Evangelista from the Dominican Republic, which is already one of the greatest names in the Rangers system. They also have Kyle Funkhauser, who is a reliever who will get a spring training invite and, um, I love that his name, first name is Kyle and his last name is Funkhauser, but Snarlin Evangelista is a fantastic name. They also signed one, two, three, four, five players out of Venezuela, um, including Juan uh, Subaran, Sergio Mejas. Uh, I'm, I, I'm way out of my depth on most of these. They also signed Jesus uh, Gomez from Mexico and Williams Wong from Italy, which... It's kind of interesting. I tried to do some research on Williams Wong. All I know is that he's from Italy. There, there's not a whole lot else that I can find on him. He is an infielder. And that, that's it. That's all I can find. Uh, this is the first time in my paying attention that the Rangers have signed an international free agent from Europe. I think that's kind of curious. Uh, we'll see how he is. But 
I'm just kind of fascinated by that. Obviously, there's a lot of names from the Dominican Republic and from Venezuela. That's kind of where most of them come from. They also got a guy from Cuba, Bahamas, Mexico. Nobody from Colombia or uh, or Puerto Rico. So, um, yeah, that is <laughs> that is where we are looking with the Rangers class. I wish I had more information on these guys, but... Uh, I don't have the resources to go travel down to the Dominican Republic or the Bahamas or wherever these guys are working out to go see them and scout them. And they're really only a handful of guys who actually do have all the information and almost all of them are just scouts. And so they're not going to tell me what they saw. They're going to tell the teams and then uh, they're going to sign those players. So we'll see. It seems like a pretty big class, one of the bigger classes, um, the Rangers ended up getting one of the top 10 guys, which is exciting. They get another recognizable name. So, I don't know. And they get a guy from Italy. So, we'll see how this class turns out. The Rangers have done a pretty decent job of scouting in Latin America for their history. They do have another guy who made it into a lot of top 10 rankings in terms of Anthony Gutierrez. He didn't quite make my top 10, but uh, that might end up looking foolish. We'll see where he ends up starting, but the Rangers have a lot of good young guys. I mean, Jason Morabel is another one of those. Uh, Glider Figueroa, um, Daniel Cueva, all of those guys made it in my top 30. So, uh, yeah. It seems like the Rangers have gotten back to their ways. They had a little bit of a lull. I mean, they, they did a really, really great job before the international free agent market was changed because they signed Nomar Mazzara and Ronald Guzman to the biggest signing bonuses that a pair of players have ever gotten. And then Major League Baseball decided, you know what? No, um, we're going to limit this amount of money that you can spend. And uh, and yeah, there's there's no international free agent draft just yet and i feel like that won't be a thing even in the next cba i feel like that that's going to be a long time before they get that system it's not a perfect system there are definitely some flaws in it there's not a whole lot of information on these guys but i'm excited to see where the rangers put them it's nice that the rangers had a little bit of information to leak out this weekend while it feels like it is very much in the dead times, the Rangers are still probably looking for a left fielder. They're definitely looking for another reliever now. Maybe even another left-hand reliever. Maybe a, a Matt Moore reunion is more likely now. I'm not entirely sure, but glad that the Rangers could give us some news in this extremely dead content time. Now, later on this week, I was going to do a Monday mailbag, but I forgot to ask for questions until Monday, um, which is kind of a theme. But uh, we're going to be getting back into that uh, at least for the, the rest of January. So I've got another one of those mailbags that is happening this week. So send in your questions on Twitter, on YouTube. Um, fly Smoke signal them into me. Maybe that's less effective. So just try Twitter and YouTube comment section. But thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. For your next listen, check out Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia going deep on MLB stars of tomorrow. It is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball.